Good evening. Uh, we want to welcome all of you to tonight's meeting of the Fort Wayne Community Schools Board of School Trustees meeting. We would ask those of you who are here with us tonight to stand and join with us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Begin with the introduction of our members, starting to my far right, Steve. Good evening, I'm Steve Corona from the 5th District. Good evening, I'm Glenna Yale from the 2nd District. And I'm Becky Hill from the 3rd District. Julie Hollingsworth, <coughs> District 1. Ann Duff, I represent the district at large. Jordan Levimoff, the 4th District. My name is Mark Giaquinta, I'm an at-large member of the school board. Uh, to my far left is Barb Trout. Barb is the clerk to the board. And seated next to Barb is our superintendent, Dr. Wendy Robinson. And I want to say good evening to you, Barb, and you, Wendy, and my fellow board members. Uh, we begin with item number three on our agenda, which are the awards and recognitions. Uh, we actually have a few left over from last week. We awarded over 200 of our students, or recognized over 200 of our students for excellence in various areas. Tonight, we begin uh, with a recognition of um, some Jefferson Middle School students uh, by name Ethan Geist and J.C. Hartman, uh, who were recently awarded the Fort Wayne Police Department Citizen Service Citation. Here's the story that serves as the backdrop uh, for this prestigious award. Ethan and J.C. were walking home one night from school. It was winter time, and they came upon a small child who had fallen into a neighborhood creek. They acted very quickly. Without regard to their own safety, they pulled the young child from the water and took him home to his mother. No one was injured, but Ethan and JC's quick action certainly helped avert a potential tragedy. Uh, Joanne Achenbaugh nominated them for the Fort Wayne Police Department's Citizens Service Citation with guidance and support from school resource officer Greg Woods. Ethan and JC received the award on May 18th. We're so anxious to recognize publicly Ethan Geist, JC Hartman, along with Joanne Achenbach, Greg Woods, and Jeff King. Would you all come forward? Please? Yeah, and and yeah, and Ethan, I'll bet um, I'll bet this uh, child's mother was pretty pretty happy when you when you brought him. Was it a him or her? I'll bet she was I'll bet she was pretty happy when you brought him home, wasn't he? Wasn't she? Yeah. Any any um, more of the story you want to tell us? Why don't you come over here so we can all hear you? You want to tell part of it? Even what were you thinking when you jumped in to rescue us? <laughs> <wants> to <laughs> I was just glad we were able to save him. 
and JC? <laughs> I mean, at that point, I wasn't even thinking with a little boy, so I'm going to, like, go, go, go. Like, I was just worried more about him. It wasn't about me at that point. It was just I didn't think twice about it. It was just natural instincts. Well, I, I love to make up stories uh, to tell my seven grandkids, but I think I'm just going to read them this one every day. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, uh, do you remember the day? What was it like? Uh, it was scary. <laughs> I was just scared. It was like 20 degrees outside, like negative 12 wind chill. It was freezing, but he had fallen through the ice. It wasn't just like in the summer or anything, so it was just really oh, scary. Wow. Yeah. And how deep was the water where you were, where the child had fallen in? Was it over your head? No, it wasn't over his head, about to his waist. Well, thank you both thank on behalf you. of the community, and congratulations. The next item on our agenda is a uh, recommendation that the board recognize Southside High School student um, Eric Baeza, and Baeza. Baeza. And I want to get this right because uh, his accomplishment deserves uh, the correct pronunciation of his name. We're going to probably hear it again. Uh, the Mr. and Mrs. Math Awards created in 2008 uh, by Governor Mitch Daniels honor the top high school seniors in science, uh, technology, engineering, and math, as well as extracurricular activities. It also includes consideration of work, research projects, leadership roles, along with community service. The winners are selected by a panel of STEM experts, and those include teachers, college and university professors, instructors, and staff from the Indiana Department of Education, along with the State Board of Education. Uh, winners receive a $1,000 scholarship. Eric was nominated by his teacher, Sarah Belcher. Uh, and so we would like Mr. Math to come forward. I thought I heard something else about Mr. Math having to do with his SATs and his ACT scores. Perfect, Perfect scores on both. Perfect yeah. scores on both ACT and SAT. Uh, so that is... Uh, That's a correction. He didn't get that, but he did get a five on his AP calculus test. Ah, oh, well, yeah. Right. <laughs> my, my, yeah, my superintendent tends to get carried away with this. But, but if you got a five as a sophomore, that's, yeah. that's, that's still worthy of note. So um, anyway, uh, uh, Eric is going to receive a $1,000 scholarship uh, and, um, and, again, was nominated uh, by Sarah Belcher. So we would like to introduce to the community at this time uh, Eric Baeza. Sarah Belcher, his teacher, and uh, our colleague Carlton Mel uh, Mabel, the principal at Southside High School. And Eric, as you stand there and get your picture taken, I just want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, I made the very important decision halfway through my freshman year to take calculus pass fail, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, likely, or likely would freshman not have gotten into law part. school. Yeah, they, <laughs> freshman in college. Freshman in college. Yeah, <laughs> key decision. So, uh, Eric, um, are you junior, senior? Senior. Your senior, yeah. and so what? Uh, what are your plans next year? Uh, major in math at Purdue. Attaboy. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. It makes I mean, sense. Will you, yeah. Will okay. you then be a teacher? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See where, wherever your talents lead you. Yeah, you're yeah. not busy putting yeah. people on Mars, right? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you good Thank luck. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the uh, privilege of uh, recognizing Southside speech coach Maggie Hunter for achieving uh, second diamond degree status with the National Speech and Debate Association. Uh, under Maggie Hunter's leadership, students 
have earned more than 3,000 points in speech and debate presentations, competition, along with service. The National Speech and Debate Association uh, will recognize Maggie's achievement June 16th at its National Speech and Debate Tournament in Salt Lake City, Utah. Maggie, who is an employee uh, of IPFW, is a volunteer coach at Southside. Uh, and uh, goodness knows we could not do all that we do without volunteers of Maggie's stature. So at this time, we would ask that she come forward uh, so that, uh, at, along with Carl Mabel, the principal of Southside, so that you can be suitably recognized. Thank you. <laughs> and Maggie, how long uh, have you been serving in this role and do you speak into the microphone? Okay. Um, I've been a speech coach for the last 13 years. I started out at Elmhurst and then went over to uh, Southside when their speech coach had <coughs> retired from the position. You want to give us and Eric Baeza, and I know he's not in here, was a member of the speech and debate team. So, for, for those of who, for those who who may not fully <coughs> understand or appreciate the the significance of speech and debate to students, I mean, there are some of us. I went. I recall my experience at Southside with my oldest daughter Leah. But unless you go through that as a parent, uh, it's kind of like band parents, but it's really a pretty spectacular <laughs> experience for these kids, is it not? It truly is. It's probably the only academic team uh, extracurricular activity that the high schools provide. Um, and as a ex-adjunct professor at IPFW, I cannot tell you the critical skills that they learn in speaking um, and, and um, cognitive skills. It's amazing. Those students who know how to do a presentation, especially when it comes to um, presenting in class, they have a higher rate of success because they know how to, they have those critical thinking skills. And I've had um, students in the past who've gone to, on to college who have said to me, if it wasn't for this speech, you know, being on the speech team, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I find that to be a great testament to speech and debate. Well, thank you very much. And uh, by the way, that was excellent extemporaneous. Oh, thank you. Then <laughs> that's not my strong suit. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, and and finally, uh, it's it's really a great honor. Uh, for this board to recognize the Northside High School We the People team for competing in the national finals along with the Allen County Bar Foundation for supporting the team financially and through preparation for the competition. Um, this, this is really kind of community night, I guess, but uh, gee, this, this really brings together what it means uh, for us to be involved in public education along with you because there are so many different ways to promote public education. You don't have to be on the school board. You can uh, do what Ms. Hunter uh, has done at the speech uh, team at Southside or what so many of our colleagues in the Allen County Bar Association, um, Jordan, have done uh, with this team from Northside. Uh, here's the, the backdrop to all of this. Northside High School students competed in the national We the People annual finals in Washington, D.C. on April uh, 22nd through 25. It was the first time a school from Northeast Indiana was represented at the national level in this rigorous, and I do mean rigorous, civics competition. The team was selected at, in the Warren E. Berger class. Uh, that class honors students uh, from an urban district who demonstrate a high level of academic achievement. The Northside students were supported by the Allen County Bar Foundation along with the Allen County Bar Association. And I, I, I saw my friend Jim Fenton out in the, out in the hall. Uh, it's just a great honor of mine that uh, Melanie Farr and uh, Marty Seifert from Heller and Colvin have been involved, uh, Rachel Blake. I'm going to miss people, but um, so many friends from the legal community did so much to uh, make this happen along with others in the community. Uh, they were. Um, the, the, this is really interesting. 
uh, the Bar Foundation Association uh, fully funded the trip uh, to Washington, D.C., organized the legal community to help the students prepare for the competition, uh, along with the uh, Indiana Tech Law School, who also actively assisted these students. Uh, so again, a great, great uh, privilege and honor for this board to uh, recognize the final, uh, the, uh, the We the People students and staff, uh, beginning with uh, Mallory Folk, Uh, Chris Jacobs, Amanda Kiefer, Madison Craner, Wendy Macias, Cassidy Merkel. Midgey, I hope I'm going to say this. Is it Midgey or Midgey? Anybody? What? Midgey. Yeah, Midgey. Oh, that was what I should have gone with my instincts. <laughs> Midgey Pierre Lewis. Sylvia Rust. Brittany Samples. Alexis Schuler. And Benjamin Tarr. We'd also like to recognize uh, Matt Mertz, a uh, teacher at Northside, Cassie Kreider, the We the People coach, along with our colleague Chad Hisong, the principal from Northside. And then, and then let, me, uh, let me invite these folks who are present, uh, if they're present, up here as well. Let's get a picture of this group, and then we're going to ask them to stay. Okay, and then, and then let me invite the following community members up as well. Um, Marty Seifert, Allen County Bar Foundation President. Uh, Craig Finlayson, if you're here, uh, Allen County Bar F Foundation Vice President of Administration. Uh, Susan Eisenhower, she's the Bar Foundation Vice President of Fundraising. She did such a fabulous job. Uh, Susan Firestone, Bar Foundation Treasurer, Secretary and attorney mentor, uh, Melanie Farr from the Bar Foundation Coordinator of Judges and Practice Hearings, Jim Fenton, the Allen County Bar Foundation Board and attorney mentor, Magistrate Andrea Trevino from the Allen County Bar Foundation Board, uh, Rachel Blakeman, an attorney mentor, Aretha Green, Indiana Tech Law School. And then uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Jenna Zimmerman, the Allen County Bar Foundation and Association Executive Director. So let's give this group a big round of applause. Now, let me just say, at this point, there's nothing that's going to intimidate you, and we can't let these students go without telling us something about this competition. We've been dying to hear since that first uh, press release yeah. at Northside. So can we, get, uh, can we get some of these students over at the microphone so they can be heard and tell us what it was like and how you did? And, and give us your name. Hi, I'm Amanda Kiefer. There you go. There we go. Um, <laughs> So for the most part, it was a really great experience, especially just because it kind of opened my eyes to how much the community really wants to get involved. Like, 
having all of these people come out and mentor us and help support us to get to this national competition, it was just mind-blowing, mostly because, I don't know, I just didn't think that this many people would care about, like, just a high school team that just wanted to go to a national competition, and it really opened my eyes to how great our community is, so. Thank you. Uh, how do you follow that? Um, uh, she's right. Yeah. Um, you think you know you're the first. We we were the first of our in our region to go, and you know, it was really exciting to see all the support that just literally came out of the woodwork for us. I mean, lawyers, rooms to participate in. Um, they fed us, which was kind of cool. Um, just all that. It was just it was really fantastic with all the support we got, and it was a once in a lifetime experience that. We now get to remember forever. So. so was was the experience in Washington, you know, what you thought it would be? I mean, all that and more. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, um, everything that we saw. I mean, all the memorials. I mean, competing. Um, the judges we actually got to meet in Washington. I mean, everything was just incredible. So we want to thank you again, and and uh, we'll leave it at this. Next time you hear a lawyer joke. <laughs> <laughs> and just remember the lawyers who came forward to help out here because we do it on a, in a lot of different areas in a lot of different ways but this is just spectacular so uh, again thank you so much uh, members of the community and congratulations uh, you Northside legends who uh, pulled it off thank, thank you thank so you. much Uh, we move on to our consent agenda this evening under Roman numeral 4. Uh, it includes the approval of the minutes from our last meeting along with the vouchers and payroll approval, the personnel report, uh, and the McKinney-Vento Homeless Education for Homeless grant, which is a recurring grant that we apply for and receive each year. Uh, unless there are any of those items which a member of the board would like taken out of the consent agenda list tonight for further comment or question, uh, we will at this time entertain a motion to approve the I'd consent move agenda. approval of the, of the items under the consent agenda, Mr. President. Second. second. Okay, there is a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? <coughs> so carried. Could I do a couple of introductions? Yes, you most certainly may. Um, we are, as of this week, fully staffed with all of our administrators for 1617. I have a couple more to bring you next time. I um, have several here with us this evening. I want to introduce um, Haley Ladau. I think Haley is here. You can just stand there. Haley's going to be joining us as a director within the elementary office. Uh, comes to us from, um, let me make sure I get all of these straight, LaPorte and Logansport, and we'll be working with Get Nichols. So welcome. She's moving to Fort Wayne. And, and could you fill us in, remind us what the uh, director, um, <coughs> we'll, we'll, yeah. We have just. the assistant superintendents. The directors work directly with the principals under the leadership of the assistant superintendent. So it just kind of okay. divides okay. up the work. Right. Uh, okay. For example, there are 34 at the elementary level. Right. So it's right. A, okay. the ability to support. So okay. Haley is Thank you. joining us. Thank you, Haley. Uh, Welcome, we also, Haley. Uh, we also have Claire Lutkin with us. Claire is here from Lafayette, and Claire will be joining um, curriculum mm -hmm. uh, as a secondary director working um, in our, on Growl on second floor. It's been a long day. And she is here from Lafayette. I didn't want to get them all confused, <laughs> and I did. So welcome. Thank you. Has not even officially started yet, so thank you so much for coming. Also have several interns um, that I want to introduce, won't go into bios, uh, but these are the people that we have used TIF money uh, to give them an opportunity to decide whether they want to be administrators or not um, and support them along the way. So I'm glad to say all of them were placed in positions. You'll see those on um, the personnel report. Uh, just I'll mention Shane Kruger, Krager, for Shane. He'll be going to Northrop. Kelly Evans, I saw Kelly. Uh, she'll be going to Lane, Virgil Griffin, he'll be going to Northside, uh, Lonnie Heck, uh, sorry, Lonnie. Lonnie will be at Kikianga, Derek Leninger, Leninger. I knew I was going to get all that. Um, he's not here this evening. Okay. And Maureen Sullivan is a switch to Maureen. 
there. Maureen is going to go from a, a school year to a 260 position. So um, did I get everybody who's here tonight? Okay. Uh, what we intend to do is probably the first meeting in July, or potentially the last one in August, have an open house reception right before a board meeting so you can meet all the people and figure out who's on first and who's on second. So thank you for letting me do that. <laughs> okay, great. Um, thank you. We go on to uh, new business. And the first is the Secured School Safety Grant for 2016-2017. <coughs> Did I have that? I thought you only gave me that. Yeah, here it is. Okay, I've got it. Sorry. Um, so this is a large grant. Uh, it's the um, it's a request that the board approve the application and acceptance of funding for a short term study uh, on school safety. Uh, and um, yeah, no. Yeah. That's the, there are two uh, oh, I, I skipped over the first mm -hmm. one. The first one's the smaller one. Right. Yeah, the first is the $50,000 grant for the, uh, with uh, the Indiana Department of Homeland Security that pays for a resource, school resource officer at Miami Middle School. Uh, the Secured School Safety Grant was created in 2013 to make Hoosier schools safer. The program is a dedicated state grant fund that provides matching grants in school corporations, charter schools, or a coalition of school corporations and or charter schools. It was a competitive grant written by Dottie Davis, so congratulations to Ms. Davis uh, for having been, uh, for having gotten the uh, district uh, this $50,000 grant. Uh, and because this is, a, this is a competitive grant and doesn't come back to us each year, uh, it was not in the consent <coughs> agenda. This time, we'll entertain a motion to I move approval. So motion to approve the acceptance of the $50,000 grant. And a second from Becky Hill. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Now, the next item is a pretty significant amount. Uh, this is uh, the opportunity to apply and accept funding for a short-term study on school safety. Uh, it comes through the U.S. Department of Justice. Uh, Office of Justice Programs, National Institute of Justice, in the amount of $200,000 to $700,000 for a 12 to 24 month period of study. So it's really good that we're on top of these opportunities. Uh, and um, the, the, the information behind this is that the Comprehensive School Safety Initiative, uh, and of course there's nothing in education that doesn't come with an acronym, so it's the CSSI, uh, funds research to produce practical knowledge that can improve the safety of schools and students. Fort Wayne Community Schools is going to partner with Ball State University, which is a really good thing. We've been talking about finding new and meaningful ways to partner with Ball State uh, for the last several years. Uh, along with the Fort Wayne Police Department, they're going to study whether having law enforcement personnel certified in crisis intervention uh, programs will reduce the arrest or uh, criminal justice involvement uh, and or decrease future school safety violation incidents. The goal is to recognize and address mental health issues in the student population as a means to reduce school violence. In other words, um, this will study the impact of getting ahead of problems by recognizing um, mental health problems by, uh, by way of, of um, on-site personnel trained in crisis intervention. So that this is really, a, uh, to me, a very progressive step in the right direction. And it, uh, it's an application that was, again, written by uh, Dottie Davis, who is here. So again, Dottie, thank you for your, your work in this regard. Uh, Dottie serves as the Director of Security. And Deb Maroney, uh, a consultant, uh, is Deb here? She's not here. I haven't seen Deb for a long time, but a very smart lady. Uh, and it supports uh, our efforts with regard to goal number one, which is to achieve and maintain academic excellence through safe and supportive schools. So um, is this something where we are still in the application pr uh, process, so we don't have, you want to come up to the microphone? We didn't. We haven't been awarded the money yet, but um, yeah, just hop up there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> that is correct. The application is due this Friday. Okay, great. 
Um, a lot of hours gone into getting the, the application ready? Yes, sir. It's a how's, very lengthy application. How, how's the partnership with Ball State been? Wonderful. They have been able to provide us lots of uh, areas that we should consider for the application. That's great. Well, that's, hopefully <coughs> this meets with success might open the door to other opportunities with them. So thank you. Other questions? Yeah, if you, uh, you identify students with um, mental health issues, so what type of um, support services would they receive? We currently uh, have an algorithm already with um, our nursing staff that includes our school resource officers and there's a state statute that already permits officers to transport to the nearest medical facility for a psychiatric evaluation. So we have those supports already in place. But I think the important part is that's a part that's added because it's often overlooked. Mm -hmm. But the whole purpose of the grant and the study is that if you're proactive, and the kids are familiar with police officers because they're in our in our schools and they develop relationships, there may be things that could be headed off that don't end in uh, situations being escalated. So the mental health part is, is great to be added, but that's not the only part of it. Very true. I, I, I just want to congratulate you, Dottie. Uh, this has your fingerprints all over it. Um, she has an amazing background. In, the issues of mental health and has worked very closely with the police department on all those issues. So I know it's your ability to partner with people with what you know and help us. So I, I'm really glad you're with us because you you continue to come up with really great ideas. So thank you very much. And this mental thank health you. piece is so, so important. I have the same, I'm just going to say the same thing as Ann, but you've already got that covered. So all, we could always use more though, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I move that we accept it. Very good. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So carried. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is a recommendation that we simply extend the 2015 uh, bus bid. Uh, that will include 924 passenger buses, 148 uh, passenger bus, uh, along with uh, various uh, accoutrements to those buses. Um, I understand that we declined the clear code, which I think was a good a good move. Um, the uh, so the uh, total bid is one million one hundred six thousand six hundred ninety three dollars, and uh, unless there is an objection, it asks for a motion and a second. I move we approve it. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Uh, we've been asked to ratify a three-year contract agreement between Portland Community Schools and AFSCME. Uh, the changes to the contract include a 1% salary increase for the school years 15-16 and 16-17, a wage reopener to determine 17-18 increases, uh, authorizing superintendent to determine stipends, for the school years 14, 15, 15, 16, and 16, 17, and a paternity op adoption day increase from two days to five days. We've seen all of this before in some of the other contracts. This is very consistent mm -hmm. uh, with contracts we've already approved for other bargaining units, yep. and I would <coughs> ask for a motion to approve at this time. So moved. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So carried. And then um, that does it. Um, so with that, um, we will at this time uh, ask for comments uh, from board members. Steve, do you have any comments? None to offer this evening. Uh, Juana, any comments this thank evening? You. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Um, I have a few. Um, I want to uh, send our con condolences to the Scott Hanny family, the teacher who was, uh, who died from injuries from a bicycle accident. Uh, he was um, a, a resource, media resource teacher at Miami Middle School. And so we send our condolences out to the Miami Middle School family, and I know that's been a, it's been a really difficult week for them. Um, I was also happy to see Betty Stein. Um, also, I wanted to say in the Journal Gazette, if you haven't seen it, there was a wonderful editorial about him and about another teacher who died earlier uh, from Northwest Allen. 
and just their contributions and what makes teachers really important to students. So it's, it's a wonderful editorial. Um, also, there was a, a few weeks ago, Betty Stein was uh, honored because of her 40, year, 40 years of working with the speech contest um, here in Fort Wayne Community Schools. Um, and Betty is the reason our kids went to Fort Wayne Community Schools. She gave us a tour of Memorial Park and was the greatest salesperson I've ever seen, and she's never quit. And that mm -hmm. was, geez, that was 30-something years ago. So she just <laughs> continues to get better and better, and so we thank her for all her work. And then this last week was the retirement uh, dinner for uh, all those retiring from Fort Wayne Community <coughs> Schools. And it, it, it is so much fun. I tell you, people, you want to hear stories, you attend this. I, I was laughing the entire time. Now, some of them were very serious, but the majority of them, they start thinking as their colleagues get up and talk, they start remembering things. And some of them, you know, I'm, I can't even repeat here, but <laughs> anyway, it's a, it's a joyous occasion. People, people are, are a little melancholy, but uh, yet they are realizing how wonderful they are and how good they are. It is, I've been to it most years, and it's just really a real kick. Uh, can I do this now? Pardon me? Can I do this now? One yes. of you. Okay. Uh, you'll see in the news tonight that the Northside High School uh, students and alumni have decided on their new logo. So you knew they were the legends, and this is the rendition of the formal one. Now, this is what they call the seal. And if any of you are interested, I have a whole different display, what would be on t shirts and that sort of thing. So I encourage you to uh, watch the news tonight. Um, this started the basis and foundation of the culmination of this started probably 10 years ago when this school board, this before I came on this board, Mark was here, uh, Steve was here, started talking about mission, and they set a mission, and they set goals, and they set values. And in those values are respects for individuals. And it is, says that often as it talks about um, how our students should feel safe within our schools. So it, this was kind of a, an outgrowth of that uh, because of the term redskins. So the, the really wonderful piece of this is the process that happened and that this was a student-led process. Um, the staff, uh, Chad Hissong and Faye Robbins, had a major part in this, but it was the students' uh, leadership that worked with their own peers to come up with over 150 suggestions. Now, these came from everybody. You all may have heard that you could have turned in a name, too. Uh, alumni were in on this, um, and so was the community. And so they went through this this group, this committee. I was on the committee, uh, not at all the meetings, because some of them were trying to get through all these 150 names. Um, and then they would go out and vote. And this is one of the few times I was told today that students actually got to pick their, their mascot. Not mascot, but uh, the, the legends idea, the logo. Um, they, they voted on everyone. They, had, they broke it down to just a few to vote on. And then they voted, and then the designs came back. Um, Jostens are the people that helped design this and did, really did the final rendition of it. Uh, Terry Ratliff, uh, our marvelous uh, artist here in Fort Wayne, worked with our students on design ideas. Um, I came away so, so impressed with the students that were there. Uh, these students are juniors, going to be seniors next year. They were professional at every meeting. They were respectful of everybody's ideas. They took the lists. Um, they took the heat uh, because they did not. They were not on a highly popular uh, subject, and they knew <coughs> what their goal was and why it was needed. There was education throughout that school from a member of the Miami tribe. A lot of education happened here, and I was able to talk to them this afternoon, and they were talking about how much they learned, what a learning experience it was. Even though they went through trauma, they knew where they were going and why it was right. Um, 
and they, they kept things quiet when they needed to, when the principal said we need to make sure everybody hears about this at the same time. No social media, nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it was just amazing. So there, there were six students there tonight. I, I don't have all the names, so I don't want to read the names, but you will see them tonight on camera. You want to see a class act. You listen to these juniors in high school talking about why they felt it was important, why they were on that committee. And I, um, I was thrilled to be a part of it. And I think we, we, we're not in trouble. We have a great future ahead of us because we've got these students that are ready to take charge and really do the hard work. This was after school work, before school work. Um, it was really amazing. So I congratulate Northside High School. They, they, they took a big step. I didn't know. Faye, would you like to add anything to that? No, I, I think you covered it. Yeah. OK. Covered it. Thanks. Um, some of you may have heard that the Friedman Foundation was in town this week. They gave a little um, dinner at Eddie Merlot's for legislators and other people in the community. And, and, but they also um, had a um, little forum uh, luncheon, so I didn't get an Eddie Merlot steak. I got a ham sandwich and some pasta. <laughs> you know, it was free. Um, but anyways, if you don't know anything about the Friedman Foundation, um, they are, they, they build the, they build themselves as in favor of choice, but what they really want, and, and all they really spoke about was vouchers. They, they want um, increased vouchers, they want universal vouchers, um, they don't want golf vouchers, Mark. And they don't want um, security or safety vouchers, but they do want school vouchers. And um, so one of the things um, that they did talk about was kind of their uh, wish list for the upcoming legislative uh, session. They're always on the look, uh, look out for ways to expand the voucher program. Um, they, they would like a 75% voucher, you know, according to parent income. Right now there's a 50% and a full voucher, which, and so they want something in between. Um, they're talking about um, a tax credit scholarship program for pre-K. Um, they are, of course, interested in fewer regulations for private schools and also for assessment flexibility, which means they don't want private schools who accept voucher kids to take ISTEP. And that actually was a bill that four years ago never made it out of committee. Two years ago, or maybe last year, it did make it out of committee. So that's something that I think we need to be vigilant for uh, uh, and look out for. They're also interested in something called an education savings account. And that is where the state basically says we have no interest in uh, educating. Here's your chunk of money, and you do with it what you want. You can use it for, I guess you could use it for educational DVDs and say you're homeschooling your child. Um, you can use it to pay tuition, private or public. Um, you can. And I don't know what the accountability is on that, um, so we'll have to see. Um, but anyways, it was it was an interesting morning afternoon. Yeah. Thank you for taking one for the team, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to comment about the North Side logo because I'm a North Side graduate, and I was just really pleased with the logo because it incorporates the old front of the building. If you're not familiar with the building, that's the, the well, it be the columns are hidden, but it's the Northside High School with the stained glass window. And when I saw that, I was just really moved by that because cool. you know, the, the old front obviously is no longer the front, and, mm -hmm. and we miss that. So. Well, the, the alumni um, were, on the co were on the committee, too, and, um, and that they were thrilled with this when, when I can, students I can came up with that. Because yeah, that was our. Mm -hmm. front of north side and that's what we remember so i think it's mm -hmm. a great job no comments okay uh dr robinson anything um i have my first meeting of the statewide committee to replace i step so pray for me oh it's tomorrow tomorrow okay. right <laughs> okay. very good 
A uh, couple of comments uh, for me. Uh, first of all, I, uh, along with Melanie Hall uh, and uh, members of uh, the Knoll Group from Northeast Realty toured um, Tolls and Harrison Hill. Um, and I want to just uh, gently remind my fellow board members that opportunities come sometimes when you least expect them. Uh, Brad Knoll's a terrific guy. He was a great basketball player for IPFW. His dad, Doug, was the coach there. And, uh, we were on the golf course, and he said, you know, I really want you to know something. I'm, I'm really um, always looking for a way to talk to prospective clients um, about the advantages of diversity. And I said, well, he said, but what, what do I say when they say, well, I want to look for a house in Northwest or Southwest? And I said, why don't you come to a school? Rather than me tell you something, it'd be so much better if you were the ambassador. So he brought uh, four or five of his realtors. And uh, they, Melanie, I think it's safe to say they were pretty blown away. Um, I mean, about it, just everything. I mean, the little kindergartners who serenaded us in French. Um, <laughs> the, the, the theme at Harrison Hill, grit, and what grit means. Um, we talked about the education uh, in, in terms of values, hard work, determination, perseverance, never quitting. Um, and it was just a great day. So uh, I had suggested at one time that we as a board um, think about a magna project where each of us would take realtors through the schools. And, and I know this, these are places of work, but if we divide it up and divide it up the schools, this would be a great opportunity for our board to get the real estate community into our schools along with Melanie's existing programs. Uh, so I'm going to bring that back up again for the fall, but it, it was a terrific experience. Secondly, I want to say that the Friedman Foundation um, sends me emails uh, to my law office. And uh, it comes to my Haller and Colvin office. And when I got the latest one, um, I responded very short and succinct. I just said, more lies and distortion. <laughs> At which time um, she responded to me, and I responded back that I think your program is a, sh a sham, uh, a fraud, and I think you people are despicable. And, um, and uh, later on, I got a question from Nikki Kelly from the Journal Gazette. Well, do you think that's the way the school board president should be uh, addressing this subject. And I said, well, first of all, when I got elected to the board, I didn't give up my rights as a citizen to express myself on issues that concern my community and my state, and that is what I did. Secondly, the program claims that it is needed to save poor children from failing schools, and that's what makes it a fraud. The program takes the money and doesn't segregate it for education purposes. It exchanges it out of one pocket into the other and uses it to fix churches, paint church ceilings, and repair church steeples. That's why it's a sham. And thirdly, it takes from the common school fund, which is used to support the only pathway to the American dream many of our children will ever have. It takes that funding away from them, and that's what makes it despicable. So I stand by all three of those words, and I did not utter them as president of the school board. I uttered them as a citizen in my law office. So if Nikki Kelly elects to do something with that on Sunday morning, I want to set the record very, very straight. Now, having said all that, I do not mind at all if the Friedman Foundation or anybody else adopts the one strategy they have avoided, and that is asking the legislature to go out to the taxpayers of the state of Indiana and fund every child's education to whatever tune the legislature elects. If you go to the legislature and say, take that message to the taxpayers, tell them how much it's going to cost, and ask them if they want to do it, fine. That's a choice the taxpayers will make. But when you take from the common school fund to support the education of middle class suburban kids, and don't kid yourself, if you look at the income limits, that's what you're talking about here, I find it morally objectionable. So, there. Um, well, having said that, uh, we do want at this time to close the official business meeting with a motion to adjourn and open up the microphone to any citizens who may be here who wish to address the board. Motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried.
Uh, if there's anyone here who cares to address the board at this time, the microphone is yours. 